Of course, it's the big mega question, right? Autonomy in architecture. And, and I think throughout my whole practice, I've done things to um, undermine the question of autonomy in architecture. So I began, uh, actually, as a grad student at Thesis, a a uh, zine about architecture, which was about the blending of architecture and pop culture. So um, even from the very beginning, I am always sort of interested in how other disciplines begin to sort of uh, combine with architecture and suggest uh, new roots and new ways of expression. Gosh, I mean, I think we're at a point in time where uh, the way that both of those are capitalized has actually created the biggest split. So um, the discipline as practiced within sort of the academy um, has, is basically has a funding model based on teaching or on the kind of curatorial practices and museum practices that support. And the professional model has the sort of the client based um, or the kind of corporate model. Um, and, and so we are, at, if we, it, without changing kind of the way that the funding sources work to support these different kinds of practice, um, we won't be able to sort of crossbreed these again, and of course there are exceptions of practices that begin that are critical practices that are able to make the leap back and forth, OMA for instance, or Delish Confidio Renfro, um, but many of those come from a kind of critical practice which then are interjected with the kind of like global capital at some point in order them to make the leap. And then you see within the practices themselves, within the structure of the, the profession, um, striations within the offices themselves which do indeed replicate these kinds of, um, you know, sort of D discipline to profession to discipline to profession. Okay. Well, I mean, the, the work that I'm doing on the US Pavilion is actually a real study in architectural agency around citizenship. And so my interest in architectural agency, it, it comes both from the academy. I think we do need sort of the theory and the disciplinary practice in order to sort of build our tools for speculation um, and being able to project something into the world um, that is beyond what we see already. Um, and then I think. If, if we do that correctly, the, the field itself, the profession itself, will catch up um, to some of those sort of visions. Um, but we, if, we don't, if we don't allow those kinds of speculations to happen, we lose um, agency entirely. We cede it um, to a client-based model or to a kind of a problem-solving model. And, and we're not just problem solvers. We go, we go beyond that, and I think we can use, right now I'm really interested in how um, questions of Afrofuturism, for instance, or other futures, um, are able to sort of allow us to dream in sort of non-Eurocentric, um, um, humanistic ways of what might come next. <laughs> Thank you.